this evening I'm uh, just heading down to the river Brathe which is uh, just below Elterwater here and I was here the other day with my kids having a little walk and I noticed a little scene what I thought would look really nice for a, for a photograph at the uh, at the right time of day obviously with uh, with nice light so it's about an hour and a half before sunset and I thought I'd come down and see if I can capture the last of the light before um, before sunset there and see if I can make a nice image from this uh, this spot here it'll be quite challenging because the Sun will be setting directly into the shot I would imagine so it's going to take some balancing and exposure but I think it'll be a uh, a worthwhile image might work well in the morning as well but I want to try it in uh, try it in the evening also and just see how it looks just have a look at the uh, just have a look at the light over there now absolutely fantastic so yeah so this is um, this is the river Brathe just below Elswart like I say and you've got the Langdale Pikes which are the main feature of the backdrop over there and uh, I'm hoping just to catch the sun before it drops behind the famous silhouette there and uh, around June July time the sun sets directly behind the Langdale Pike so it's quite an interesting um, makes for quite an interesting image when uh, when you get it with the uh, the silhouetted warm sunset behind so yeah we'll uh, we'll have to see I think this image I want to make is just around here somewhere so it's only a minute's walk from the car park which is great when you carry this brute of a tripod see there we go look at that absolutely fantastic isn't it look at that yeah I'm not sure you'll be able to see that with the dynamic range of this camera in the mode I've got it in but that is awesome and in usual fashion I haven't brought with me a long lens again today I'm trying out this um, new wide angle tilt shift lens which I've got and I'm hoping it's going to become a regular in my camera bag because uh, I've really missed having the tilt shift feature oh, I couldn't have worked out any better look at this so here's my foreground interest what initially sort of attracted me to this got all these swifts flying over the river eating all the insects right so here we are look at that that's going to be a technic really technical shot that given the um, the sun directly behind it's going to be very difficult but I'll get set up and we'll see how it goes I'll put you in HDR mode and hopefully you'll better see a bit more of what I'm seeing there we go now what I'm hoping to try and achieve is I want to, I basically want a shot with microphone's falling off here hold on a sec I want a shot with of this log really and I just want an interesting background to be able to, uh, to create it so here this is what I'm shooting with tonight so I've got the uh, Hasselblad X1D with the X uh, H adapter the HTS 1.5 tilt shift adapter and the HCD 24 mil so with this I should in theory there we go sun's going now I should in theory be able to set this up and create a perspectively cor correct shot so that's the theory so step one is for me to balance my tripod off so it's nice and level step two is to use the shift function to knock that down a little bit so I can position the scene nicely in the um, 
in the viewfinder there. And then I can adjust my, uh, I'm at F11. Uh, and I can adjust my exposure by simply changing the shutter speed there. Now I'm at ISO 100 with this as per usual. Uh, for maximum sort of image quality if you will. And I know I'm going to have to tilt this down for around two and a half degrees. Now I'm going to zoom into 100% on the back of the camera and use my depth of field preview. And those blades of grass look pretty sharp to me, as does the log, as do the trees in the background and the Langdale Pikes themselves. So I'll take my first shot and we'll see how that comes out. Slightly overexposed for the sky but I'm going to wind it back a bit and expose for the sky in a second exposure. I'll merge those two together and we'll see how it comes out. But um, this is the composition I walked past the other day. Uh, I was shooting film on my uh, Olympus OM10 which is a, a camera that my dad bought the week I was born in 1978. So I'm uh, still loving using that camera, which is great. And uh, I haven't had my film developed yet, obviously, but um, it's good to see this this trunk and, and recognise that there could be a composition there. Okay, so we'll just wait for the light to change and uh, hopefully we can... I can get the conditions as I walked. Typically uh, just missed it there, but hopefully it'll be back in a minute. So I'm not having much luck with the uh, with the light coming back, which uh, which is a little frustrating, but um, there's nothing I can do about it. I probably should have just got here a little bit earlier, but you never know, do you? It's, uh, it's a, it can be a bit of a lottery, especially when uh, you've got a lot of cloud cover over there on the horizon like uh, like we have tonight. But um, I'm here anyway, so if things change, I'll uh, I'll be able to take advantage of them. Hopefully, it's uh, it's always interesting at this point in uh, in a shoot because for me personally, you start questioning whether you'd be best running off somewhere else, you know, and then it can become a bit of a headless chicken exercise, and you know, no nobody likes um, it. Just doesn't become enjoyable, then it's almost desperation looking for something. Uh, so. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the time I've got now to um, just have a little play around with this trunk, if you will, and uh, and see if I can compose it in, in any other way. I mean, you saw me arrive here. It was literally, right, arrive, set up there. It was very rushed, really. Whereas I'm wondering if uh, if there's something... If there's something more creative I can do with it, if you will, but... Uh, it's it's gone quite dull now actually when you if i just turn you around you can uh, hopefully see that there the uh, the foreground and the midground well especially the midground though all those uh, trees over there in the distance at the uh, at the bottom of the the langdale pikes there, the mountains in the distance it's uh, it, it's yeah it's gone pretty dark so there's not much going on there now it would have been nice to get those rays coming down and just flooding that area with light but I do think this uh, this place would be probably better shot in the morning because you would get obviously the the well the, in summer the sun will probably rise it probably rises up it'll rise over here somewhere um, and it would be perfect for like side lighting upon this uh, trunk and also lighting the mountains there in the background and and this wonderful foreground so um, yeah just on the off chance this evening it's. Uh, uh, it's not looking like it's coming back, but we'll uh, I'll see I'll see how it goes and uh, Who knows I might be lucky or or I might just be uh, able to enjoy some fresh air and uh, Having a nice view Okay, I'm uh, I'm gonna move on from there because uh, I uh, I have a very strong feeling that that's the best of it for this evening and what a brief moment that was it's uh, it's it's what keeps us hungry though, isn't it? Or it does for me. It's that chasing of the light, or the uh, the chase between you and it. But not to worry. I, I know where it is, and uh, and I can come back here at any time. 
and hopefully create something from there at some point in the future. Now, what I'm going to do before I just get back in the van and go home sulking, because that's not going to serve me any good, I'm going to just use this time to have a little scout around. I mean, I don't really need to spend loads of time exploring this because I've walked down here thousands of times, but when there's nobody else here, it's worth just checking out a few of the popular vantage points and playing around with a few compositions perhaps see what you can you can find i always like to do that so i can bank i like bank them for future use and and tonight is a perfect example of what i always say about why you should keep practicing and be visually aware because you know i mean it would be interesting when I play this video back to count how long I had of good light when I arrived, you know, like to, to be brutally honest, if I wasn't trying to create this video, I would have got that shot because I would have got there quicker. I'd have got there 30 seconds, a minute quicker and, and I would have got it. So it's, um, you know, and this is something I've said all the time, you know, people who vlog, you do compromise your ability to take images because it does take time and, and energy uh, but you know that's part of the process there's not not no problem with that or anything but ultimately you know you've got to ask why you're here are you here to create video content for middle-aged men to watch or are you here to create images what last a lifetime and uh, in my case that's uh, you know to sell them and as prints and they do last a lifetime you know they do a good image is popular for a, for a very long time Anyway, so like I say, it's worth, um, whilst I'm here, it's worth just checking out a few of these populous little compositions, work on them, refine them when you haven't got the pressure of good light. Like, so, so as I was saying, this is a great example of, that was the first time I've ever, you know, set that up to shoot it with a tripod. Um, there was no real thinking behind it it was just literally right put the tripod down and take a few seconds to compose it you know whereas you could you could in theory you could spend you know what an hour composing that working it out and and would the image be better for it yeah of course it would it probably would but in these brief moments of amazing light you don't always have that much time so what i'm trying to say you know in a long way is it doesn't hurt to bank these locations bank these compositions play around with them when the weather's not as favorable so that when you are there when you get those brief moments of outstanding light you can actually get the image very quickly and and that works well for me because i focus predominantly on the lake district you know i don't really make images from anywhere else other than you know the odd trip to scotland so because this is literally five minutes from my front door uh, you know i can i can come here as many times as i want really so it's quite good for me to be able to build up that local knowledge which makes uh, you know like when as a, as a way of example when i came out of my house tonight i didn't know i was going to film here and then i got to the top of the road and saw the light was like this left uh, so I thought, right, I'll, I'll come and do this, and and that's uh, that's quite something, that isn't it? When you've, it's uh, it's quite something when you have a plan and then the the weather changes it, and and rightly so, because that's what makes photographs mostly, you know, most of the time. In most of interesting photographs, that without the right conditions, they're not that special, and maybe that's not fair, but. I think good weather and good light can improve many an image. Right, so this is a nice little spot here. And it's nice. I, I took an image from here the other day when I was on the walk with the children. Uh, and there was a fisherman over there. And I took it on Portrait 800 with my Olympus OM-10. Which, if I've had it developed by the time this blog goes out, I'll show you it. If not, I'll put it on my Instagram, which is Capture Lakeland. Uh, this is a nice spot because you've got these lily pads in the foreground. Now this 
ground is usually notoriously boggy so I don't really want to sink but um, if I can get close enough you'll see the lily pads and they do make for quite a nice foreground element which uh, again it's pretty flat at the minute because there's no there's no nice light this is very spongy here um, but you can see the lily pads down there and there's a flower coming out on that one there which is not quite here but in the next week or two or month maybe I'd, I think that'll bloom out and that could make quite a nice uh, addition so yeah it's uh, it's interesting how, uh, how how things work out all driven by the weather good okay well I think I'm going to play around with a couple of compositions here and then I'm going to head back and I'll try again another time and we'll see how it goes but um, yeah I, uh, if, if you take anything away from this video then you should take away to be prepared and be efficient in, in how you uh, conduct yourself towards getting the image and don't be afraid to invest some time in shooting the scene in dull horrible weather knowing that when the weather is right you can go to it and get it straight away because the ho doing some homework really pays off and uh, and it can yield dividends going forward because like i say the image will last a lifetime okay well i'll leave it there for now thanks again for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next video hopefully coming soon all the best for now i'll see you again on the next video